If you've been watching my videos recently, you'll know that in the past couple of weeks I came across a huge haul of vintage Warhammer and I said that it'd be cool moving forward to utilise the fact I've got all these old models and look at the history and the lore of specific characters. So jumping straight in with that idea, today I want to talk about what is possibly one of the most iconic characters in all of the Warhammer world, the Gene Stealer. The Gene Stealer has pretty much been around since the inception of Warhammer 40,000, and whether you know them as the ravenous Xenomorph-style space aliens tearing into Imperial Terminators in games like Space Hulk and Space Crusade, or junk chain-wearing fathead cultists like this guy, check this guy! There's no denying that they're not one of the most recognisable races in all of Warhammer. When Warhammer 40,000 first came out, pretty much all the models were futuristic versions of fantasy characters, orcs, elves, chaos, dwarves, but the Gene Stealers were a race all of their own, and even though their lore and history and allegiances have altered over the years, starting off as their own army and then later being adapted as part of the Tyranid race, they have always been a certified design, and are easily one of the most iconic creations in Warhammer, so much so that the design of them has changed very little in the 30 years since they were first introduced. Now I've got a bunch of these little dudes unpainted that I've acquired over the years, so I'm thinking a wicked way to kick off this first ever episode of the little Warhammer show that we're doing is to take a 30 year old Gene Stealer and paint him up in the classic OG colours. So I start by just roughly assembling one together. You'll notice that these old Gene Stealers that came with games like Space Hulk and Tyranids Attack and Space Crusade were moulded in blue plastic. That's so that you had the option to not paint them if you didn't want to. You could just play them in the colour that they came. Also, they kind of stick together with just friction, so I am going to glue it at the end, but it's nice to know that I can take it apart if there's any hard to reach areas that I can't quite get into with the paintbrush. And check this for like super geeky authenticity, I'm even going to use a base from 1991. Now I've got a friend Luke who has a huge Tyranid army with tons of gene stealers and he likes to paint his in a much more contemporary style. He bases them all with a white spray paint and then uses ink washers to bring out all the little details in them. I think his look fucking awesome and normally realistic is my go to style but what I want to do with this Gene Stealer and these other Warhammer old school models that I'll be painting on this show is bring back some of that old school flavour so I'll be trying to find a balance of the new school and the old school, the old school style colours but using some of the new ink washes and new methods and try and find a happy medium. Also, this is not only just the first Tyranid that I'll ever have painted, this is also the first time I've painted any miniatures in fucking years. So this is kind of going to be like a test to myself to see if I've still got it. I'm by no means a pro, but I've done lots of prop making and special effects painting over the years, so I'm confident I can try and at least come out with something that looks decent. So I'm going to start the same way that I paint most things, I'm going to start with a nice black base and build up the colours from there. I wanted to work from the darkest colour possible, so once that black base coat had dried, I then went and dry brushed it with Canto Blue, which is the darkest blue that we had available. I made sure that I hit every surface area all the way round, giving it a real good coat of dry brush all the way round with the Canto Blue. I then repeated the same process with Calgar Blue, which is a slightly lighter blue, and then finally hit it with just a real light dry brush of white. So by starting with black and then the darkest blue and working up to the lightest blue with a tiny little bit of white, I could really see all the details starting to come out on the model. Alright, so once those layers had dried, I then hit the whole thing with a watered down Talisar Blue. Talisar Blue is a contrast paint, it works like an ink wash, and although this looks way too vibrant for what I'm wanting right now, it unifies everything into a nice blue colour that I can darken down later when I do my final ink washes. Next I had to black out all the areas that are going to be pinky purple kind of colours, all those exposed open areas on his back and his arms and his legs. I also painted all of his claws white because I'm going to hit them with a darker ink wash later. And then using a colour called Pink Horror, I painted all the little raised areas in the pink and purple parts of his armour. 
<laughs> so this next bit jumps forward quite a bit because I got in the zone and I forgot to record, but basically I'll explain what I've done. I basically highlighted all the pinky purple areas again by mixing a bit of white with the pink horror. I then got some Kalgar blue and finally highlighted all the raised areas of the blue armor. I put an Agrax Earthshade wash on his clothes, I painted his head and then I give a real light dry brush over the whole thing again with the Kalgar blue just to try and make everything look a little bit more unified. To paint the Gene Steeler's face, I took some white on a super fine brush and individually picked out each one of his teeth. I then painted his tongue red and then painted over the top of that with something called Blood for the Blood God. That's a technical paint that makes everything look really bloody and gooey. And then I took another technical paint called Nurgle's Rot and painted inside his mouth to make it look like he was salivating. I painted his eyeball again with the super fine brush in white and then painted the whole eye socket with something called Tesseract Glow. That's another technical paint that makes his eyeballs look like they're fucking glowing. Finally, I then gave the entire model a wash of watered down Drakenoff Nightshade and a little bit of Null Noil and it just brought out those little tiny fine details and gave everything a nice overall finish. All that we're left to do then is cover his base in PVA glue, get it in a bit of sand, paint it black, dry brush it, add some little decorative extras and boom, we've got a finished OG 30 year old Gene Stealer. So there you have it, my finished 30 year old jean stealer. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I don't want anybody to watch this and treat it like any kind of painting tutorial. This was literally me just picking up my brushes after a few years and painting something that I've never painted before. Uh, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I know these are called miniatures, so it's kind of part of the parcel, but I was really thrown off by how small this thing is. Trying not to fuck up any of the little details when I was going in with a fine brush was so hard, it was straining my eyes. My hat goes off to people that paint these all the time because they're so fucking talented. It's a miracle that mine even came out this good. There was also part of the model, like the claws, that had no seam line to distinguish where the claw and the hand ended, so I had to kind of paint that line in myself, and it made me think, is this something that's just exclusive to older Warhammer? Does newer Warhammer not have these kind of problems? So with that in mind, I went back and I painted a newer Gene Stealer. So with the more modern day Gene Stealer, in many ways they're a lot better sculpted and much easier to paint. And it was also interesting to be able to compare the two and see the differences, how much they've developed since the old 30 year old Gene Stealer to the more contemporary one. The older Gene Stealer does look a bit more clunky, it's got a face more like a monster. The new one looks a lot more rapid, its face looks a lot more vicious and streamlined. But overall, I prefer the OG Gene Stealer, that's the one for me. They're both awesome, but I like the old school one the most, I like old school. I also found an old Warhammer skull, so I replaced the skull on the base of the old Gene Stealer and put the new skull on the new Gene Stealer, just to be super geeky and authentic, just to make it that little bit more perfect. I remember as a kid, one of my friend's stepdads had a Space Crusade game high up on a shelf in the dining room and we was never allowed to get it down or look at it or play with it. The only way we could see it is by standing on a chair and I'd look over and I'd see the Gene Stealers and the Space Marines on the box and I thought they looked so fucking dope. It's cool that all these years later, I can have my own Space Crusade game and my own Gene Stealers and paint them in the OG colours. See, a lot of this retro stuff, it's not just all about nostalgia for me. It's also about being able to enjoy the things that I weren't allowed to enjoy as a kid. So having these little dudes assembling them and painting them, to me, is fucking awesome. 
I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I didn't really do any planning or preparation. I just went in pretty blind in regards to painting the Gene Stealer. I didn't watch any tutorials on painting them first. I just wanted to use my own knowledge just to see what came out. This whole thing was just a bit of an experiment for me, setting up the cameras, how to film it, and how to edit it together. So I'm confident that moving forward, now that I've filmed this first episode, that we can come out with really cool videos in the future. Now a character to me is only as cool as his adversary, so when you've got a cool character you need a cool enemy for him, and the most iconic enemy of the Gene Stealer is without doubt the Imperial Terminator. So in the next episode I'm going to try my hand at painting a 30 year old Space Hulk Terminator. I'm really looking forward to trying my hand at painting one of them, so if you're looking forward to it too, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you've got that bell button on so that you don't miss it. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like, and if you're not already, subscribe to the fucking channel. I've uploaded a shit ton of videos on here, so if you like this one, chances are you enjoy the other stuff that I put on here. I like to cover anything and everything cool, artistic, retro and edgy. Also, I'd like to know who your favourite Gene Stealer was. Do you like the new one, or do you like the old school OG Gene Stealer? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I'm on Instagram, so if you want to get at me on there, it's at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse. And if you want to be a super fucking slime renegade, you can subscribe to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV. And for just a dollar a month, you can help make Slimehouse bigger and better than ever. In the meantime, I'm going to catch you in the next video. My name's Theo Kane. This has been Slimehouse TV.